First of all, ברשות אבא מורי, אמר דעתה, ברשות הבעל הבית פה עכשיו, רבי בלז, מי הקדוש ברוך הוא גאון ברכה והצלחה. אמן. אני בעת השם לכל הקהל הקדוש, שהקדוש ברוך הוא ייתן לכולם פה ברכה והצלחה בכל מעשה ידיהם. רבותיי, as we know, tonight is the ילולה of the צדיק, רבי מאיר בעל הנס. Now, רבותיי, if we look at his name, there's a question to be asked. From where, do, where, from where does this title of Rabbi Meir, Baal Anis, come from? If we take the word Baal Anis and we translate it, it is the miracle maker. The Baal of the Nis, the, the owner of the miracle. Now where did this come from, Rabotai, that he, this, Rabbi Meir received the title of the miracle maker? Now Rabotai, in order to understand that, we need to go into Rabbi Meir's life. As we know, Rabotai, Rabbi Meir was married to Buria. Buria was a big tzaddikah, and as well, she was one of the two daughters of the tzaddik, Rabbi Hanina ben Tardion. Rabbi Hanina ben Tardion was one of the Asara Rugel Machut, one of the ten tzaddikim that gave their lives and died in the name of Hashem. The Gemara in Avodah Zarah in Daf Yudchet says that one day, to get into the story of Buria, to understand why we call Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir Baal Anes. One day, the Romans, when they, after they destroyed the Bet HaMikdash, they made a rule. They put a law that under no circumstances there will be a person that will teach Torah in Am Yisrael. Rabbi Hanina ben Tardion, that did not stop Rabbi Hanina from teaching Torah, the Gemara says not only that he would teach Torah, but he would teach Torah Barabim. He would teach Torah Mamash in public. The Gemara says that one day, the Romans, they captured Rabbi Hanina teaching Torah Berabim and holding a Sefer Torah on his back. When the Romans caught Rabbi Hanina doing such a thing, doing such a, a, a going and get complete the law, they decided that they're going to punch Rabbi, punish Rabbi Hanina in a very cruel way. The Romans, Rabotai, what the Gemara says, they took Rabbi Hanina and they wrapped him with a Sefer Torah. I, I mentioned this story a couple of times. They, they wrapped Rabbi Hanina ben Tardion with a Sefer Torah and on that Sefer Torah, they poured oil and they burned Rabbi Hanina and that Sefer Torah together. The Gemara says that when the Sefer Torah was burning, the parchment was burning, but the letters were going straight to Shamayim. When the Romans took Rabbi Hanina, they decided to punish the family of Rabbi Hanina as well. So they took the second daughter of Rabbi Hanina, the sister of Buria, and the wife of Rabbi Hanina. The Gemara says that the wife of Rabbi Hanina, at that very moment, they, they killed her. But the daughter, the, the sister of Buria, they took her and they sold her as a slave for the Romans. They, so, they sold her to be one of the slaves of the kings. When Buria, the wife of Rabbi Meir Baal Anes, heard that her sister is sold to the Romans as a slave, Buria did not allow that to pass. Buria Tzadeket, she went to Rabbi Meir Baal Anes and she asked Rabbi Meir Baal Anes for help. That maybe Rabbi Meir Baal Anes would be able to bring Bo the sister of Buria out of, out of the, the hand of the Romans. When Rabbi Meir Baal Anes heard what Buria was asking, Rabbi Meir did a condition. He told Buria, if I will go to the Romans and your sister did not sin any sin with the Romans, Akadosh Baruch Hu will make a miracle and your sister will be free. But if your sister has sinned with the Romans, there's nothing I can do and there's nothing Akadosh Baruch Hu can do. Rabotai the Gemara says that Rabbi Meir Baal Anes, in that moment he went, he took a sack of golden coins. He got dressed, he put the uniform of the Roman soldiers. And Rabbi Meir Baal Anes went to the house of where the king keeps all his slaves. When he got to the house dressed as a Roman soldier, he entered the gates and he asked, he said, where is the sister of Buria? So the guards, they pointed, they said it's that woman right there. When Rabbi Meir, he was dressed complete with the outfit of a Roman, he approached the sister of Buria, that the Gemara does not mention her name in any place in the Gemara. He approached her and he asked her to do a Navira. He wanted to test the sister of Buria, really, if she did a sin or if she didn't do a sin. When Rabbi Meir approached the sister of Buria, the sister of Buria started to give him excuses. She's sick, I can't, I can't do a sin right now, I'm tired, I'm sick. And she gave all these excuses why to come back the next day. The Gemara said that Rabbi Meir would come day after day, and after a couple of days, and every single day she makes another excuse. Rabbi Meir understood that she never sinned any sin, and because she never sinned, 
a miracle will be able to, to, to happen. Rabbi Ben Baranis approached the guard of this house, the guard of the house of the slaves, and he offered the guard of, 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 of this house half the bag of gold if he released the sister of Buya. When this guard, he got this offer for half a, half a sack of gold, right away this, go, this guard, he said, but there's a problem. I am not the only guard in this house. And if I let her free, they're going to come to me and they're going to punish me for this. Rabbi Meir took the other half of the sack of gold coins and he handed it over to the guard. He said, this will be for you to bribe all the other guards like that. None of the guards will be able to, to, to go and to lalshin alecha, to tatter tell on you. The Gemara says that that guard it wasn't enough for him. He went to Rabbi Meir Baranes and he said, but Rabbi Meir, what will happen when this half sack of, of gold gets finished? So Rabbi Meir said, you know, I have a very powerful sentence. And this sentence is, And if you're the guard will tatter tell on you and you will, you will come to the point where you will be punished by the king, you say this sentence, And I promise you a miracle will happen. This guard looked at Rabbi Meir and said, that's beautiful that you have a beautiful sentence that's going to save me. But how do I believe you that this sentence will, be, will really save me? Rabbi Meir, he approached near that house. There was all the, the chayot gaot of the king, all the bad animals of the king. And Rabbi Meir entered a cage of vicious dogs. And he took that guard with him into this cage of vicious dogs. When they entered this cage, right away, Rabbi Meir, like Ma says, he picked up a handful of sand and he threw it on the dogs. In that moment, the dogs, they saw Rabbi Meir, they saw this guard, they started to run towards Rabbi Meir, to eat Rabbi Meir, to, to, to bite Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir stood up and he said, Elahad Meir Yanini. The Gemara says, in that moment that he said, Elahad Meir Yanini, the dog stopped and turned around. Rabotai, when that guard, when he saw that this sentence, Elahad Meir Yanini, it has very power, it has a lot of power. He agreed to the offer of Rabbi Meir Baalanes. Rabotai, in that moment, he released the sister of Buria and he went with, to his way with, with the sister of Buria. The Gemara says that eventually they caught that guard. And when they took that guard and they, were, they took him to get punished, the Gemara says that the king punished him to be hanged. When they brought him to the place where he's supposed to pay his sin that he did, the person that had to come and push the chair under the, this guard that was being almost hung, they almost hung him, hung him. The Gemara said that the man, he got a shock. He couldn't do what the king was asking him. He said, I don't know what's happening, but I cannot push the chair under this man. The king went and brought another man. And every single person that the king would bring to come and finish the life of this guard, nothing would happen. They would approach this guard and suddenly they would lamudon. They became like a statue. And Rabotai, and from that moment, the name of Elahad Meir Yanini, that is when the sentence, the strong sentence of Elahad Meir Yanini, that we, we know what Chazal say about this sentence, that when a person finds himself, like what the rabbi said, when a person finds himself in the tzara, it's a big segula to say the sentence of Elahad Meir Yanini. And it's a big sugula to be saved and to bring a miracle, Rabotai. And from that moment, Rabbi Meir, his name, his title was changed. He was no longer Rabbi Meir. He was Rabbi Meir Baalanis, the, the miracle creator. And Rabotai, in this very night, is a big sugula to pray, like, like what the rabbi said, to light candles and to pray for all what we need. But Rabotai, tonight is a special night for a different reason as well. It's not just the Ilula of Rabbi Meir Balanis. It's also, whoever wondered why is there matzot on the table, it's also Pesach Sheni. This morning, Rabotai, we gave a small shiur about Pesach Sheni. And I was thinking to myself, what is the connection between the Ilula of Rabbi Meir Balanis and Pesach Sheni? Now, Rabotai, as we know, there must be some sort of connection because they, it's not 100% sure that Rabbi Meir Balanis passed away on this date. The, uh, Yudalit Be'iyar was not the official, and also there's no mamash proof 
that Rabbi Meir Baal and his passed away on his date. But what happened? Chachamim, they came and they kafu. They made this day to be a day that we celebrate the, the passing away of Rabbi Meir Baal and his. So I thought, I thought to myself and I said, there must be some sort of connection between Pesach Sheni and the Ilula of Rabbi Meir Baal and his. In order to understand to the conclusion I got to, we need to understand, first of all, what is Pesach Sheni. Rabotai, in the time of Yitziat Mitzrayim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu obligated Moshe and told Moshe to tell Bnei Israel that in Yud Dalet Benisan, all Bnei Israel need to come forward and to bring the sacrifice of Pesach, to bring the Korban of Pesach. Now, Rabotai, one of the conditions that you needed to be able to bring the Korban of Pesach and to be able to keep this mitzvah of Korban of Pesach was that you were not allowed to be Tumat Mit. What does that mean? You were not allowed to be, you were not, you were not allowed to have the impurity of the dead. Now what does this mean, the impurity of the dead? At the time today, we all, we all have that, uh, that chazakah of uh, tumat metim. But when a person comes in close contact with a person that is dead, he receives the impurity of the dead. Now one of the conditions that you needed to be able to keep the mitzvah of Korban Pesach was that you did not have the impurity of the dead. Now what happened, Rabotai? All Bnei Israel, they came forward and they brought this sacrifice of sacrifice of Pesach. But there was a small group of Bnei Israel that were not able to bring the Korban of Pesach. And who were those people? It was the people that were taking care of the body of Yosef. The people that were transferring the body of Yosef, the people that were doing this big mitzvah, this big of, of, of carrying the bones of Yosef and keeping the swear that the sons of Yosef made, they were not able to keep this mitzvah of Korban Pesach. Why? Because they came in close contact with the dead. This group of people, they approached Moshe Rabbeinu and they told Moshe Rabbeinu, it's not fair that after we do a mitzvah, we're not able to keep this mitzvah. You disclude us from this mitzvah of Korban Pesach. When Moshe heard what these people have to say, he told these people, stand here, wait, let me go talk to Hashem. Let me see what I can do. The Midrashim, the Gemara says that when Moshe, he went to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and he told HaKadosh Baruch Hu all what these people are saying, the excuse, the, 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 the ta'ana that these people have of why is, it, why is it like this, that you're discluding us from the mitzvah of Korban HaPesach. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, from now and on, 30 days after Yudaled Benisan will be a day that you can come forward and repair what all those who lost Pesach. And Yudalit Be'yar, the day was made of Pesach Sheni. The second Pesach. The day where a person can come and fulfill and repair what he's lost. Rabotai, I said, you know, you can learn a big lesson from Pesach Sheni. You can learn the lesson what the Torah is trying to teach us. That a person, it's never too late to fix what was lost. It's never too late to fix, to do Teshuvah. Even though a mitzvah, it can seem that it's lost and it can seem that there's no way that I can bring back this mitzvah, the Torah comes and shows us that even Pesach, the mitzvah, that it's all according to the date, it's all about from Yudale to the end of Pesach, it's all about the date. But still the Torah comes and shows us that even though a person that he lost the mitzvah, he was not able for any reason to fulfill the mitzvah of Chag Pesach on its date, he has another opportunity. He has a second chance. And it's a big lesson, Rabotai, that we should all take into our lives that it's never too late to change and to do good. And Rabotai, that is the connection of Pesach Sheni and Rabbi Meir. And I'll explain why, Rabotai. Rabbi Meir, as we know, as the rabbi mentioned, he used to be one of the students of who? Of Elisha ben Avuya. Elisha ben Avuya was one, he was the rabbi of Rabbi Meir Balanes, the tzaddik, that here we sit and we celebrate his inula. The Gemara in Masechet Chagiga in Daf Yudalit speaks about Arba Shemich Nesula Pardes, four that entered the field. Rabbi Akiva, Elisha ben Avuya, ben Azai, and ben Zoma. Now, Rabotai, I'm not going to enter to the whole story, I'm just going to give the, 
the general uh, uh, what happened because the story is a big big story that Arambam speaks about it and all the Rishonim they speak about it. So I'm just going to give the the, the, the outside of the story. The Gemara says that four entered the Pardes. Pardes in our translation is field. But Rabotai the Gemara when it says Pardes it does not mean a field that as we know. A Pardes and according to the Gemara is entering a different world. So the Gemara says, Those four entered the Pardes. They entered a different world. One entered in peace and came out in peace. Who is that? Rabbi Akiva. The Gemara says that Ben Azai, when he entered the field, when he went to the next world, on the spot he died. <coughs> ben Zoma, when he entered the, the, the field, the Pardes, when he just entered, he completely lost his mind. He completely became crazy. And the Gemara says that when the rabbi of Rabbi Meir Ba'alanes, Elisha ben Avuya, entered the field, he, he became an atheist. He said, There are two gods that exist. Rabbi Meir, for the rest of his life, from that moment and forward, he, he couldn't accept the fact that Elisha ben Avuya, his rabbi, completely left the Torah in his foot. The Gemara says, and there also a little bit further in Chagiga, in Tetvav, there it says that Rabbi Meir, for the rest of his life, he would chase Elisha ben Avuya and try to convince him to come back to But every single time Elisha ben Avuya, he had another excuse. The Gemara says that Rabbi, Aki, that Rabbi Meir, he took him to Bet Midrash, and he tried, he tried everything to bring him a tshuva, but nothing worked Rabotai. The Gemara says that one day on Shabbat, Rabbi Meir Baalanes saw Elisha ben Avuya riding the horse on Shabbat. Rabbi Meir Baalanes decided that maybe today I will be able to bring back my Rav, Elisha ben Avuya, back to tshuva. The Gemara says that Rabbi Meir was chasing Elisha ben Avuya on the horse. And when he was chasing him on the horse, he was telling Elisha ben Avuya, come back with tshuva. You are tzaddik like Elisha ben Avuya, the Torah that you have. And as we know, Rabbi Meir was the biggest student of Rabbi Akiva. So if Rabbi Meir says that Elisha ben Avuya, his Torah was important enough and big enough that he, he devoted everything he had to bring him a tshuva, Rabotai, that, that Torah of Elisha ben Avuya was very, very big. The Gemara says that when he was chasing him, Elisha ben Avuya looked at Rabbi Meir and said, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir, give up. It's too late for me to do teshuva. I can't do teshuva. Even if I do teshuva, it won't help. Rabbi Meir said, where are you bringing this from? There's no such thing as it's too late. Elisha ben Avuya said, for me, it's too late. Right. Elisha ben Avuya said that he heard from Shamayim, he heard like Kadosh Baruch Hu, Machriz, announcing, Shuvu banim shovevim chutz miacher. Elisha ben Avuya told Rabbi Meir, he said, I heard a Kadosh Baruch Hu saying, I will forgive all my kids. But Acher, that we know, Acher is Elisha ben Avuya, I am not willing to forgive you. So Elisha ben Avuya said, even if I do teshuva, it's too late for me to do teshuva. So there's no point for me doing teshuva. Rabbi Meir, he lived by that concept of it's never too late to do teshuva. The Gemara says that he continued for the rest of the life of, El of Elisha ben Avuya, of Acher, to try to bring Elisha ben Avuya back to teshuva. The Gemara says that one day, Elisha ben Avuya, like all people here, he went to his world, he, he stopped, he died. They were sitting in the Bet Midrash, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yochanan, and it came from Shamayim that Elisha ben Avuya, when he went up to Shamayim, when they took him to Betin Shelmala, when they took him to the Betin, to the court of Olam Ha'elyon, when, they, when they, they, they stood in front of the Neshama of Elisha ben Avuya, they said, there's nothing we can do with this Neshama. Elisha ben Avuya is lost. Now, Rabotai, in a case like this where a person it has been such, he went against, he went from such a, a tzitkut, such a big tzaddik, to such a big rasha that he, he, and he denied HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They said even hell will be a gift for Elisha ben like this. So what did they do with Elisha ben Avuya? They put him in what we can call it in English a limbo stage. 
It's between the world. They put him in an area where there's no beginning and there's no end. It's limbo. Hell, there's, seven, there's 11 months of Gehenna, but at the end of those 11 months, there's a tikkun, there's something being fixed. But in the limbo stage, it's, it's a forever stage. It's a stage that lasts forever. And as we know what the Zohar Kadosh says, we know what the Gemara says, that that is the worst stage that a neshama can be in. When Rabbi Meir Baal Anes heard that his Rav, Elisha ben Avuya, is in a limbo stage, he said it's not too late to fix the neshama of Elisha ben Avuya. The Gemara said that in that moment, Rabbi Meir, he had a plan. He said, I'm going to pray that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take me today, and when I go up, I will drag Elisha ben Avuya to somewhere else. I will take him out of this limbo stage. The Gemara says that in that day, Rabbi Meir prayed that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take him, and in that day, Rabbi Meir died. When Rabbi Meir, when the Neshama of Rabbi Meir went up to Shamayim, the Gemara says that when he was going up, when he was going between the worlds, he grabbed the Neshama of Elisha ben Avuya, and he dragged him where? He dragged him to Gehenam. He dragged him to a place that there will be a beginning, there will be a reparation, and there will be an end. The Gemara says that all Chachamim, when they, when, they were, when they saw that Rabbi Meir died, the first place they ran was the, the kever, the, the grave of Elisha ben Avuya. When they were standing around the grave of Elisha ben Avuya, they started to see smoke coming out from every single crease of the grave. They said Rabbi Meir succeeded to take his Rav from this limbo stage to Gehenam. Rabbi Meir succeeded his mission that he wanted to do. When Rabbi Yochanan saw that Rabbi Meir succeeded to take Elisha ben Avuya out of the situation he was in, Rabbi Yochanan said there, there will no be such a thing that a student will take his Rav to Gehenam. I will not allow a student take his Rabbi to Gehenam. The Gemara says that Rabbi Yochanan in that day he prayed also that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take him. And that day, Rabbi Yochanan, he died in that day. When he went to Shamayim, the Gemara says, he stood in front of the gates of hell, he stood in front of the gates of Gehenam. And right away, the guards, right away, the angels of, 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 the, of hell itself, they stood back. They said, we cannot stand in front of Rabbi Yochanan in his Torah. Rabbi Yochanan in that day went down to Gehenam and dragged Elisha ben Avuya out of Gehenam. Rabotai, that is the connection between Pesach Sheni and Rabbi Meir Balanes. The concept that it's never too late to fix what is lost. Even though something can seem that it's completely lost, Rabotai, we can learn from this holy day, from the Ilula of Rabbi Meir Balanes, from Pesach Sheni, that nothing is completely lost. If there's a little bit of emuna and a little bit of ratzon, everything can be brought back to complete reparation. Pesach Shani Rabotai, Pesach is all made on a date, on Yudalet Benisan. When Yudalet Benisan comes, the mitzvah of Pesach becomes. If I eat matzot on a regular day, there's no mitzvah. But even a mitzvah that it's complete dependent on a day, with a little bit ratzon, we can repair and we can take back even the things that we think and the things that seem that are completely lost. So Rabotai, Bezrat Hashem, Bishchut, Atzat, Bishchut, Atana HaKadosh Azir, Mechaye Metim Rabbi, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir Baal Anes, Shakadosh Baruch Hu, Itenu Kulam Po, Barachah Ba'atzlacha Bekom Ha'asea Lechim. Bishchut Rabotai HaKadoshim, Rabbi Chaim Pinto, Shakadosh Baruch Hu, Itenu Kulam Po, Barachah Ba'atzlacha, Barachah Ba'atzlacha, Barachah Ba'atzlacha, Barachah Ba'atzlacha, Barachah Ba'atzlacha, Barachah Ba'atzlacha, Barachah Ba'at